Hey guys, Deathy here. Today I wanted to make a quick warden guide for you guys as a lot of people have been asking me, um, letting them know what the abilities do, what the upgrade path is, what the item build is, etc. So we're gonna talk about all of that, including the playstyle, the strengths and weaknesses, etc. Keep in mind, as in with any build, uh, things can change with time. Uh, I think the strengths and weaknesses are probably going to remain similar, uh, but the item builds can obviously change a lot with patches. Uh, I'll be keeping my in-game build uh, as updated as I can, uh, so just follow that. It's uh, Deathy's Warden build for any updates, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so let's start off with the abilities. Warden's first ability is called Alchemical Flask. It throws a flask that damages, slows, and reduces weapon damage and stamina of enemy it hits. So it says stamina in the description, but it only applies stamina reduction once you get two points into it. I'll like this. Up to anybody. The upgrades at the moment are plus 40 damage, plus 1 stamina reduction, and minus 6.5 second cooldown, and applies 35% fire rate slow. Warden's second ability, Willpower, allows him to gain a spirit shield and bonus movement speed. The first upgrade is plus 20% move speed bonus, minus 19 second cooldown, and the last upgrade is plus 200 spirit shield health that now scales with spirit power. Time to run through the fire. The spirit power scaling on the spirit shield health is 3.9, meaning for every point of spirit you have, you'll gain almost 4 points of spirit shield health. Binding Ward is Warden's third ability. Curse an enemy hero. If they don't move away from their initial position within the escape time, they will be damaged and immobilized. As you can see, when you use it on someone, an area visually forms around them, and if they don't escape that area within the time, they get caged. It does damage and immobilizes enemies for a duration of 1.75 seconds by default. The first upgrade is plus one second immobilized duration. The second upgrade is minus 19 second cooldown. And the third upgrade is Warden deals 20% more bullet damage to trapped heroes for six seconds. Finally, Warden's ultimate ability is called Last Stand. After charging for 2.2 seconds, release pulses that damage enemies and heal you based on the damage done. While channeling last stand, you have greatly increased bullet resist. This is actually new from the latest patch. You get 50% bullet resist. This is what the this channel looks like. Moment. The upgrades for last stand are plus three meters radius, plus 70 DPS, and minus 56 second cooldown. Now, before we get into the character's strengths and weaknesses, I do want to give a couple tips about the abilities. The first thing to know is that willpower move speed bonus uh, stacks with all the additional other move speed items so for example if you have enduring speed you get a ton more value from 35 percent move speed this means that getting a lot of flat movement speed is really good on warden the second thing i want to talk about is the ultimate the ultimate when you're channeling it you are standing still if you cast it on the ground however there are a couple exceptions that allow you to avoid this for example, one of which is when you're coming off a zipline, you can actually cast your ultimate in the air. This allows you to minimize the amount of time during which you're standing still. Another use of this, which isn't as popular right now, is using Majestic Leap to get into the air and cast your ultimate. This is what it looks like. This can allow you to get in much deeper and have a good ultimate. Let's talk about Warden's strengths and his weaknesses. Warden's biggest strength is the fact that he's incredibly good at fighting single characters. The reason for that is his flask is a move speed, weapon damage slow, and fire rate slow when it's maxed out, and his cage makes it so anyone has to run away from him, otherwise they're going to get caged and you can usually kill them. This makes Warden one of the best 1v1 heroes in the game. Not a lot of heroes can just stand their ground and fight with Warden. His other strength is his great mobility in the mid to late game. Early on, he's actually incredibly slow, as you can see. His base movement speed is one of the slowest in the game, and so early on in lane, he's actually very slow. Um, but once you get to the mid game, once you get an extra point into willpower, you have 35% move speed bonus, and you get a couple of movement speed items, you become an absolute speed demon. Another one of Warden's strengths is his great survivability. With his ultimate, he heals for 100% of the damage he deals. This means that if you're hitting three heroes with your ultimate with zero points in it, you're healing for 300 health per second minimum. Of course, this scales with spirit, and once you get two points into it, you get even more DPS, meaning Warden can heal for ridiculous amounts if you hit a lot of people with ult. This means that it's incredibly difficult to fight Warden when he has his ultimate up unless you have significant anti-heal. Finally, Warden's last strength is his overall crowd control. 
His alchemical flask currently allows him to debuff a lot of people in an AoE, removing stamina, weapon damage, move speed slow, etc. This is incredibly strong because it allows Warden to control the flow of fights a little bit better. Let's move on to his weaknesses. One of Warden's biggest weaknesses is that in the early game, he's fairly vulnerable to ganks. He's very slow, as you can see. Another weakness of Warden is that if you're behind, you will feel very weak. The reason for that is you need to be able to tank some damage for your ultimate to be good. If you can't tank the initial burst of damage the enemy team goes on you, your ultimate is pretty much useless. Another thing about Warden is that he gets kind of hard countered by debuff remover. So debuff remover can remove the cage, uh, it can remove the debuff from alchemical flask, and overall it makes Warden's kit just a little bit worse. Finally, Binding Ward is very unreliable as CC, and therefore needs a setup into it. Setups can include knockdown, slowing hex, things like that, but by itself it's not actually much of a threat. I would say Warden's an overall very well-rounded character that will probably be at least a pick worthy in a lot of metas. Right now, he sees some play, and I struggle to see a meta in which Warden would be completely unviable due to, to the pure utility of his kit. Let's talk about Warden's playstyle. Warden can have many different playstyles, but I want to talk about the playstyle that I prefer, which is the Assassin Warden. This playstyle focuses around hitting your timings, farming, and once you've hit your timings, you can go almost anywhere on the map and solo kill people that are alone and caught and unexpecting. This works particularly well with the item build that I've put together, which I'll talk about shortly. So early on, I don't necessarily put too much pressure with Warden. Your playstyle is mostly going to consist of shoving the wave with alchemical flask like this, harassing the enemy with your last hits, and using cage to zone them if you need. Your goal is to get out of the laning stage with at least not being behind. You're actually a decently strong laner thanks to your flask, and this is complemented by items like Mystic Burst early on. But early on, you're not really expecting to go crazy. Then, once you have your core items, you can zoom around the map and go assassin anyone who's, you know, isolated. The other thing that's important about this playstyle is that when people go on you, your playstyle is to go around a corner and then ult and allowing them to not chase you. This is very good because if they commit to fighting in your ult, you're going to get a lot of lifesteal and you're just overall very hard to kill. So to summarize, get your timings. Once you've hit your timings, go assassinate anyone that's out there alone. That's the gist of Warden's playstyle in this build. Of course, in other builds, he can serve as more of a frontline character. In this build, he can be a frontline character, but he's also a bit more of an assassin. Let's get into the item build. So the first three items are really just laning stage items. Headshot Booster, even though it's been nerfed again, I think is still a strong buy. Uh, high Velocity Mag just makes it so your bullets aren't slow as hell. For example, here's without High Velocity Mag, you're kind of slow, you're not as good for securing last hits. But if you have High Velocity Mags, your bullets might as well be hit scan. It's a lot easier to hit people and to hit last hits with it. Headshot Booster and Hollow Point Ward give you a ton of damage. So if you have these three items, you're already doing some serious damage if you're hitting headshots. Extra Stamina just to give you a little bit of survival. Mystic Burst is to allow you to do more damage with your grenade. Sprint Boots is just to be able to move around a little bit faster since you're incredibly slow as Warden. Slowing Hex is your main power spike early on. It allows you to catch people in your cage more effectively. So usually the combo for Warden is going to be you're going to Slowing Hex them first. You want them to use a Stamina. So usually you want a Slowing Hex. Then once they've rolled once at least, you throw the Flask on them and then you cage them. So in a game, I'll usually do, I'd be running at them, he would roll away, I would do this, and then I would cage him while the slowing hex is still on him. You don't want to use cage right away, because when you use cage right away, that makes it very easy for the enemy to simply run away with two stamina. A dash jump will always get people out of cage early on. Mystic Reach is just to make your cage a little bit bigger, making it harder to get out of. I want to say that there's always situational items, and it's going to be always relevant to adapt to the meta. For example, right now, Extra regen is pretty meta, and healing rate's also very good. So whatever regen you need, always buy that. Let's talk about the mid game. The mid game is really just maximum speed and damage for cheap. We get fleet foot because it gives us health and it gives us movement speed as an active. It gives three meters movement speed. I believe it was nerfed by one meter last patch. Enduring speed is a must on this hero because you are slow as hell by default. You'll be the Combat Barrier gives you a ton of damage while shielded, and you are always shielded with this build. You get 28% weapon damage as well as 8% fire rate. The fire rate is very strong on Warden because your gun does a ton of base damage. 
Veil Walker is really what enables this build to shine. Once you have Veil Walker, without a ton of other items, if you just have all the items that I've mentioned here, it's not a ton of souls. We're looking at maybe, let's say, something like 8,000, 9,000 souls max. And all what you do now is you activate your shield, you activate your fleet foot, and then you go through a barrier. As you can see, I'm already zooming. Now imagine this warden's walk running at you, slowing hexes you, grenades you, and then cages you. You're just dead. And that's kind of the idea of this playstyle. Enchanter's Barrier, since you're already running around with barriers, getting cooldown reduction and spirit power is just good. It helps your ultimate, it helps your flask, it's just good. It's very value. Bullet Resist Shredder is just to allow you to deal a little bit more damage and a little bit more extra health. Heroic Aura is for even more speed. So here's choice. what it looks like with Fleet Foot and Heroic Aura activated. Now you're moving even faster. It is kind of ridiculous. And these are basically your mid-game items. Once you have all these items, there's a ton of options you can go. Situationally, if you need a little bit more lockdown, for example, if you're dealing with, let's say, a pocket or someone you really want to lo lock down, Knockdown and Silence Cliff are both great options. The other great thing about these items is that they both give Spirit Shield health, and we are scaling this a lot. As far as damage goes, Right now, Headhunter and Crippling Headshot are mostly what you need. If you need a ton of damage, you can always consider going Glass Cannon. I don't have it in my build because usually my games do not go that far. Soul Rebirth is mandatory on almost every build if you get late enough. Unstoppable is going to help you if they have a lot of CC or curses or things like that. And Inhibitor is just a very strong item for making it so people can't fight you. If you have Inhibitor, they have a minus 35% damage penalty. And with your Flask, they already have 35% fire rate slow. I do want to talk about a couple other items that can be very good. For example, Suppressor is a very strong item on Warden. Coupled with your Flask, it makes it so people pretty much cannot fight you. The reason I don't have it in my build is because usually I'm a little bit contested for slots and I don't find that I have trouble fighting people in 1v1s in the first place. However, if you find it necessary or if Suppressor gets a buff or something, feel free to include it in your version. As always, these builds aren't the be all end all. Nobody has fully optimized builds yet, and I want to make that clear. You should always feel free to experiment with your own additions to my builds. Finally, you can get Magic Carpet. This is this item is only if you like fun. So if you're someone out there and you don't like fun, don't buy this item. But if you do like fun, well, here's what that looks like. Let's say that you're fighting and enemies going at you. Well, you simply activate the Magic Carpet and you run away through a veil. And now you are flying invisibly making you impossible to catch. This is one of the few combos that you can do with Magic Carpet. Another thing you can do is you can Magic Carpet, go into the Veil once again, go really high, cast your ult from the, the skies, and then come back into the fight like this. This item is just incredibly fun, and it's just really good on Warden. The stats that it gives are okay. It gives you bonus health, spirit power, and ability duration, which makes your cage and your ult longer. Overall, just a really fun item, and I would highly recommend trying it out and see if you like it. It synergizes very well with Veilwalker because you also get a lot of shields. This is also the reason that we do not have any resistances in this build. It's because we're stacking shields. So when I have my two up, as well as my magic carpet and my Veilwalker, you see I'm at over 2,000 shields total. 900 bullet, 1,300 spirit. This is a ridiculous amount of shields. You do not need resistances with this, and you don't really need a ton of base health because you have so much shield. This also means that you're very strong against things that apply minus resistance. For example, Crippling Headshot, which lowers your spirit resistance right here. 24% spirit resist reduction does not affect you much because you are mainly shields. That's pretty much it for the item build. Overall, I think Warden is an incredibly fun hero and is very strong, especially once you get the hang of it. I just want to emphasize once again how fast you can go and how incredibly entertaining this character is, especially once you get Veil, Magic Wart Carpet, Veil Walker. It's just a blast. For those that have seen my streams, I have so much fun playing this build, and I really hope that you guys will have fun playing it too. Anyways, enjoy your games and have a good one. Bye bye.